Hello everyone, welcome back. Today is the 16th of April and I'm relegated to the kitchen today because it's too late and the bedroom walls are too thin, the neighbours always complain about talking and whatever, so ooh, I'm in the kitchen. Anyway, as of right now there are 2,108,933 confirmed cases of the coronavirus worldwide, 137,053 deaths, and just over half a million people have recovered from the virus, but recovered, right? What does that mean? Does that mean you don't have the virus anymore, but you have permanent lung damage? I don't really know what recovered means, so I'm not going to go into much detail about that. But right now, I'm going to look at yesterday's numbers. Yesterday, and probably pretty much going forwards, the country with the most new cases was the USA, and they had 30,206 confirmed new cases yesterday. Uh, 2,482 deaths. My God, it's getting higher and higher. Spain yesterday added 6,599 new cases and had 557 new deaths. The UK, 4,603 cases and 761 deaths. But France here with 4,560 confirmed new cases and 1,438 new deaths yesterday. All looking pretty scary. I hope everyone's staying inside. That's the only way you're gonna escape getting this virus, really staying inside. I mean, if you're inside, how can you possibly get it, right? So just some really quick stories today. In the UK, a 106 year old woman recovered from the virus. 106, they're getting older and older. So underlying conditions, I don't know, but age is definitely the top of the bracket for, you know, the people who don't usually recover from this virus, but she managed 106 years old and she's out of the hospital. Well done to her. Students across the UK are going on a rent strike because they are trapped in their student accommodation while the university is closed and all the facilities are closed. So they're going on a rent strike. What do you think about students not paying their rent? I think if it's student accommodation from the university, I think that they should get it for free. I think they should be refunded because they are only there because they should be studying. International students, they never really knew at what point they should leave because I think most people would agree now, they didn't realize it would get so serious. So most people thought, ah, oh, it's just a hundred cases. Oh yeah, it's a thousand, but look at the other countries, they got more. And then as it crept up, crept up, crept up, there was no good time to leave. And also with the travel bans going on, it was always gonna be difficult to just bail out. So students that are trapped in their accommodation during the social distancing, social lockdown, whatever you wanna call it, I think they should get the rent for free. Private landlords, well, I don't know what we can do about that, but students in student accommodation, they should get it for free, right? France's Navy is in a bit of trouble. 668 sailors tested positive on one ship. I think it was out of 1,700 sailors, 668 were positive. Oof, that's a big problem for France. A lot of the deaths in the UK are happening in care homes and the care home numbers aren't being added to the official statistics. I remember when the deaths were being recorded in China and other countries and people were saying, oh, well, they're not counting people who died at home or they're not counting people who died here and there and here and everywhere. But what about the UK now? Not counting people who died in care homes. Interesting. And from what I'm hearing, the care home figures are pretty much equal to the figures that are being released publicly from the hospital deaths. So that means that the UK deaths every day are pretty much double what we're seeing. Hmm, that needs to be sorted out. A couple things. Firstly, people in care homes need to be tested ASAP. The staff should be tested weekly or daily, and the people who are in the care homes, either they shouldn't be allowed out or they shouldn't be allowed to have any visitors, or both, because the risk is just too high. These are all people who are elderly and maybe with underlying health conditions. They are high risk people and with care home staff as well not having the right protection that they need. This is this is crazy if we're just gonna let people come in and out of care homes, not test them, let the staff go home to their families, go to supermarkets and everything. This is this is ridiculous. So the care homes need to be locked down, fully locked down, no visitors, nothing. And the staff should be tested as often as possible. Elements of the UK lockdown will still be in place up until there is a vaccine. When I read that, I thought, oh my God, that means that the world is pretty much ending, right? Because SARS had no vaccine. SARS was 17 years ago. The Spanish flu, did they have a vaccine for that? I don't know. Did that eventually get bunched in with the regular flu? I'm not sure, but these coronaviruses, the vaccine is not easy to come by. I mean, just think about SARS. There's no vaccine for SARS from 17, 17, 18 years ago, I forgot, when was it, 2002? Yeah, about 17 years ago. No vaccination for that at all, no vaccine. So how are we gonna expect that we're gonna have a vaccine for COVID-19 in half a year, a year or whatever? 
17 years on SARS with no vaccine. So for the UK to say that we can't have life back to normal until there is a vaccine, that's kind of scary and people should be really thinking about what they're going to do in the future. To be honest, I'm just waiting for the house prices to come down and then I'm just going to move to the UK. So I'm just waiting for that. I'm just sitting here waiting. You know, people, there will be some people who will get poor. No one except Jeff Bezos is getting rich during this time. So most people will be generally getting poor. Some people will be trying to sell houses to get money back and and the prices should go down. So hopefully I'll be able to buy a house in the UK soon. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I know, I know, I know. There's always, But there's got to be a positive out of every negative, right? Come on. COVID-19, I can buy a house. Come on, please. And just finally, I, I told you this video is going to be a bit shorter than usual. So finally, I just want to talk about some crazy cures that I'm seeing on the internet. So in India, some of the politicians there are saying that cow urine, yes, cow's urine cures the coronavirus. And I just want to say, no, don't do it. Come on. I understand that in India, the cow is somewhat of a sacred animal. But, ugh, cow's urine? Urine of any animal? Come on, just pure urine? That can't be healthy. And they're having urine parties in some places. Cow urine parties where people can go to the bar and get a drink of urine and whoop, a cure. Ugh. Just thinking about it makes me... In Tanzania, they're saying that going to church will burn the virus. Again, I'm sorry, no. And in Brazil, they're suggesting that a day of fasting will stop the virus. No, the virus doesn't care about what you're eating. The virus doesn't care about your food. The virus only cares about getting into your lungs and into your organs. Like what does food have, what does food have to do with it? So I'm just curious, what are some of the craziest things that you've seen online talking about what will cure this virus? And don't you dare say face masks, because face masks don't cure the virus, but they do definitely help prevent the spread. Anyway, let me know in the comments down below what's the craziest thing you've seen on the internet about curing the virus or stopping the virus or whatever. Like, I don't know, looking directly at the sun, probably someone will say, look, if you look at the sun for 10 seconds, not only will you be blind, but you will not be able to catch the virus. No, don't believe any of that nonsense. But let me know in the comments down below what you've seen online. I will see you tomorrow. Thumbs up, subscribe. Bye.